Hello, my name is Zachary Petrie and this is the mobile cottage. Um, just finished building it last month, December 2014. Started in August 2013, so just under uh, 18 months. Um, we're here in North Oakland, almost South Berkeley. Uh, I built it here in the backyard of the home that I rent. Um, built it by myself. I did have, there were two days where I had a couple friends help me out. Um, thank you, David. Thank you, Simon. Um, but other than that, it was just me. Uh, and I did have an electrician come in and look at the work and sign off on it just to make sure that everything was wired properly. Um, but let's take a tour. So this is the outside. Uh, we will start with the lattice. So I wanted to utilize space. The um, front porch area is too small to have potted plants. So I actually put a membrane in there and poured soil into the walls. <laughs> Um, and because I wanted ivy to come up the lattice. So there's ivy in there and it's winter time here. So um, the ivy's kind of in winter mode. It hasn't been getting too much water, but it's, it's fine. It's been growing. It started as just like a little ivy plant. So it's grown this much and maybe four months, five months. Um, these windows are, uh, I got these at an antique store from a home that was um, built in 1880. This is hand cut beveled glass. Um, and there's a second window here. So it adds some nice kind of light refraction in the morning when you're on the porch area. And we'll, I guess we'll walk around. Um, so it's on a 20 foot trailer bed. Um, I have the heaviest duty tires you can get that will fit those wheel wells. They're grade E. Um, and so there are four wheels. I think the total gross weight that they can carry is 11,250, right around there. The house actually weighs probably close to that, um, right around there. But the tow vehicle is going to take probably 1,500 pounds. So it, it'll be fine. Um, the, trailer came with scissor jacks at each four corners, um, which is very helpful. But you can see I have it up on blocks, um, which is what I would recommend if you were to park it anywhere, uh, putting it up on blocks. Also utilizing the scissor jacks, the more points of contact, the more stable it is. Right now it's on two back scissor jacks, and four blocks, and then the tongue uh, jack. Um, so that's seven points of contact, and it's stable. Uh, the only thing, like if you're put in the loft space and moving around, you can feel it move a little bit, but it's pretty solid. Um, there are a lot of windows in this house. Um, double hung, uh, wood clad windows, so they're vinyl on the exterior, and you'll see when we go inside, they're pine on the interior. Um, there's a outboard or out, outdoor uh, motor vent. So I did that so uh, you wouldn't hear the motor when you're inside the house. I, had, I have a friend who, who built one um, in Louisiana and I know that he had mentioned that the sound of the vent, the bathroom vent, was something that you could hear and kind of got annoying. He changed it by adding like a little sound barrier. Um, but uh, I thought I would start with that. So there's a, there, is ducts that lead to registers both in the bathroom and also one over the stove. Um, the siding is Western Red Cedar. It's already primed and treated. Um, so the color that you see is actually how it came. It's primed. Uh, and um, it kind of has a weathered look. Um, but this would be painted if the, per the person who purchases the home wants me to paint it a certain color. They just need to tell me what to paint it. And then I hand uh, hammer drove in all of the nails. Um, I didn't want to use a um, nail gun 
I don't know why, but I wanted to do it all by <laughs> hand, and so I did. And so it took a while, but uh, they're in there and well secured, and it kind of gives it a little, little bit more of a hand craftsman look. Um, what's nice about the uh, the house is kind of the size and, and storage of the house. There's plenty of storage. There's also exterior storage. Um, so you have this whole cavity here. So you can store tools, you can store brooms, um, and on the other side, it goes all the way through. There's just a shelf up here. On the other side, uh, you have two propane tanks that uh, connect to the tankless water heater and also to the stove inside. Um, the roof of this and the other cavity, uh, I, I uh, put a roofing membrane underneath the deck part so no water will get inside um, your shed. And it's also strong enough to support your weight. So <laughs> I thought, um, being that that's the master loft space, I thought it would be good to have kind of a fire escape if you needed. So that's why it's tiered like that. So you can, God forbid something were to happen, you'd be able to climb down. And this is the uh, on-demand tankless water heater. Um, it works great. Uh, there's only uh, the need for the shower and then the bathroom sink and the kitchen sink. You could run them all on hot water and it'll be able to meet that demand. Um, you also have access valves that I added here, so you can do regular flushing quite easily. Uh, I think it, it, it depends on your water supply, if it's hard water or not, but uh, an annual flushing or maybe a flushing every two years is probably a good idea. Um, it has, the, the trailer itself has uh, brakes on the axles um, or uh, on the wheels. Um, and so it attaches, it attaches to the towing vehicle so that when the towing vehicle brakes, it also brakes and the lights on the rear also indicate braking. So that's very helpful when you're towing such a large, um, uh, a large load. So I guess this is kind of the front of the house. <laughs> I mean, ideally, if, if I were to live in this house, I would set it up, put it on blocks, take off the wheels, and then do a dry stack wall around it, and it wouldn't look like a trailer, um, which is kind of what I was hoping to do. You can see there's there's this kind of trellised area that breaks up the, the wall. Um, I did that because I didn't want to have just a f straight wall going all the way up. Um, I feel like if you break that up a little bit, at least aesthetically, it, it uh, adds a little bit more appeal. Also. Um, it adds for little ledges for both loft spaces so you can put planters up there, very narrow planters. Um, you have a, uh, this is a 50 foot 30 amp uh, marine uh, cord going into a marine inlet. So that's all water resistant and waterproof. Um, and this goes to a, a 30 amp breaker. Uh, five circuit breaker that I can show you when we go inside. And also you have a uh, uh, exterior um, outlet. If you need to do any work or anything like that, you need a power tool. Um, the stairs I made small enough so that they can travel with the house and then you just go. Um, all of the the red stain that you see is uh, one of the nice things about being on the west coast is you have access to uh, readily available redwood. This is all from Mendocino and I stained it, two coats of stain, so it should be fine for a few years. You might have to reapply a coat maybe in three years, something like that, um, just to keep it protected. And uh, Monica, I'll let you... Uh, let you walk in ahead of me. Mm -hmm. Is there's a little lamp? I don't know if you saw that uh, cool little vintage lamp, and it's on a timer, so it's um, set to adjust with the time zone that you're in and daylight savings, and so it'll come on every night. Uh,
So this is the interior of the house. Um, Harvey, you coming in? So there are little touches of kind of uh, refurbished um, antique items. This door is one of them. Um, this is poured, hand poured, craftsman glass. Um, so it's also very nice in terms of kind of, it adds that weighty uh, look. The only thing is that this house is very well insulated. The only kind of um, weak part of the insulation will be this single pane glass. So all the rest of the windows are double pane. Um, cellulose, blown in cellulose insulation for the walls and then uh, rigid foam for the floor, rigid foam for the ceiling. I think the walls have an R value of about 10, or maybe it's 12, and the ceiling and the floor have an R value of 14. Um, and all of the, the, this door and also the door to the bathroom in the study, it's, they're antique with antique hardware, so it's uh, skeleton keys, these old timey <laughs> keys that take a little bit of love but uh, it also has a latch if you don't want to use the skeleton key and you just want to latch it. Um, so as I mentioned outside, one of the, what I think, think is uh, also unique about this house is all the storage space. Ciao, bud. So you have eight drawers um, for, I built it for one person, but you could really have two people living here with all the, all the space. And then you also have closet space. Um, For your hat, <laughs> and then pants, suit, whatever. Um, also storage down here. This is the uh, five circuit breaker, um, 30 amp. Right now it's wired for 120 volt. Um, you can set it up if you took it to an RV park. Uh, just uh, switch out the bus bar and then uh, split the wiring to accept 240. So within five or 10 minutes, you can make the adjustment. You just need to know what you're doing. So and I could explain that to whoever bought this if they wanted to take it to a RV park or trailer park. And then another storage space. Or why don't you maybe go outside? <laughs> <laughs> um, so place for shoes, coats, more know, socks or something, hats. <laughs> um, more drawers. Um, it's kind of a unique size drawer. I don't know, maybe baking sheets or whatever, but right now, right now, everything that's in there is like warranties and explanation of appliances and extra light bulbs. Um, this is all, so this is all custom built. I made this to fit the space. Um, it's, uh, mostly solid red oak and then, uh, red oak ply, um, and finished with, uh, coats of polyurethane. Um, everything was also uh, nailed in by hand, um, set with uh, nail sets and then putty over and then uh, stained and coat of polyurethane. So the um, storage spaces also act as the stairs. So you can climb up to the loft space um, and I'll let see there's kind of the guest loft which would fit a uh, single bed or twin um, and then the master loft would fit a full-size bed or a queen-size tatami mat which is what I built it for right now there's a queen-size futon up there um, which you'll see do you want to come up here mm -hmm. I was just giving, I was just showing. It's a, <laughs> it's a 20 foot long trailer. Um, it's eight and a half feet wide, 13 and a half feet tall. It's just at both eight and a half and 13 and a half, um, which are California's vehicle restriction height and width dimensions. Um, so that means that there is only so much headroom you can have and you need to parse it among both the first floor and the loft space. So the loft space 
if I can show you, show you kind of, I'm 6'2", so I built this to be, um, to accommodate my height. Um, I'm good right now, and then I have to kind of kneel down. So, this is the master loft. And there's a little cavity here that you can put a dresser or whatever you want beside your bed stand. Uh, the light fixtures, um, they're on three pole wiring, which means you can turn them on and off at the lights by a switch, and you can also turn them on and off down at the bottom of the stairs. So that's nice if you don't want to climb back up here to turn them on and off. And also, all of the lights are dimmable, which is also, you can set the mood or whatever. <laughs> um, anyone that's come in is always asking, what, what is this? <laughs> Why did you put this here? Um, there's, so with the uh, outdoor motor vent um, that I showed you, one of the registers comes here, right above the stove. I didn't really want it hanging out in space and just ending, so I just added this, and with the idea of hanging plants or maybe growing herbs, and then also you can put hangers on this side and hang your pots and pans if you have maybe nice copper pans or cast iron pots or something like that. The stove is quite large. Um, we bake these cookies in the stove. Um, four burner stove run off of, it's been converted, I converted it to um, LP propane gas, uh, which is what the water heater runs off of and what everything's hooked up to. Um, works fine. Oh, that's the oven. So, and actually surprisingly, if you, <laughs> If you want to heat up the tiny house, you could just run the four burners for a few minutes or the oven and keep the door open for a few minutes and uh, it gets pretty hot in here pretty quick. Um, there's also a space here that I'll show you that uh, when you leave it running it, and maybe leave one of the windows cracked a little bit in the upper space, it kind of keeps it like a perfect temperature in here. Um, copper sink, there's a lot of, there's kind of a copper theme throughout the house, and you'll see it in the bathroom as well. Um, I chose copper because it's living, it'll patina, it kind of, in time, it'll it'll mature and, and kind of show usage, so I think that's kind of cool. Um, then you also have a fridge. Uh, I think it's 4.5 cubic feet. Um, it's pretty sufficient for one person, I would think, when you have a freezer space. Um, down here you have a space for a trash can, and then in that cavity back here, you have a 44 gallon water tank that's hooked up to a pump. So if you filled that up um, and wanted to move this somewhere where you were hooked up to city water, you would have 44 gallons to work with. The shower head, I think it's supposed to be low flow, which is the only thing you can get in California, or the only thing that you're supposed to have in California. I think it's 2.5 gallons a minute. Um, so you could take a week's worth of showers and have a week's worth of water if you take like two minute showers <laughs> with a 44 gallon tank. So um, it's more just kind of emergency water. Or, uh, also good if you're in California and there are earthquakes um, and you can't get city water anymore. It's good to have that kind of filled up. Um, while you're up there, I'll show you the breakfast table. So more antique hardware, just latches down, holds down, and it's solid. Okay, you can eat some cookies. <laughs> um, so it's kind of perfect for two people, uh, here and here. Ah. Hey, Monica, <laughs> looking good. Um, so yeah. This is the best seat in the house. <laughs> because of the cookies. Yeah, because of the cookies. Um, so, and it's super easy to put back up. You just grab the leg. Latch. There it is. So again, plenty of storage. Um, liquor, liquor cabinet, or whatever you want this to be, or lemon bin. <laughs> um, 
There's also uh, plenty of outlets throughout the house. Anywhere where there's potential water, um, you need to have a, a ground fault circuit break uh, outlet, which all of these are. And are also all the outlets are that are not around water are also tamper proof. So if you have kids. One of the cool things about building your own house is you can get innovative as to like storage. And so there's always kind of weird and like kitchen uh, counters, uh, how do you utilize this, this space in the back corners. And so instead of having a super long drawer, I made it a little short and then you have a bin back here that you can grab from. So you can hide your, I don't know, pesticides or cleaners or poisonous kitchen supplies back there um, out of reach of kids and things like that if you did happen to have a kid here. Um, on to the study, I guess. So, or whatever this could be. It's just a kind of bare room right now. Um, it has the little space heater um, that heats up nicely. Um, all of the woods throughout are hardwood. This is uh, reclaimed solid red oak. Um, it, it had a, a stain on it that I took off and then uh, uh, coated with polyurethane. And then in there, that stained maple that was also reclaimed. Um, and let's see, the loft space, more redwood use for uh, kind of the, the rafters in this room and the joist for the loft above. This is also maple, um, all the trim is pine. Uh, everything has at least two coats of um, finish on it to protect the wood. This is kind of unique, the door. I didn't want to do a pocket door because I wanted to have a window here um, and I wanted to save space. So I have these hidden hinges that allow the door to be the door to the bathroom as well as the door to the study. and I'll let you come in ahead of me to go into the bathroom. So the bathroom right now has a composting toilet. Um, it's a nature's head, um, self-contained. It separates, it hasn't been used yet. It separates solids and liquids. So trap for the solids, liquids go in there, and then you empty out the li liquids separate the solids, uh, you add a peat moss to, and it helps decompose the solids down. Um, I've heard that you it requires very minimal uh, uh, removal, which is quite nice. Um, and uh, it's vented as well, so there should be no smell. Um, I have a friend who uses this in his tiny house, and he highly recommended it, so I got it. It's mostly, it was built for small sailing boats. Um, you have the register in here. One of the things about having a solid wood bathroom is you want to make sure it's well ventilated. So always have the vent on whenever you're taking a shower. Um, there's also a little bit of a medicine cabinet that I built, also reclaimed wood. Um, your light and another uh, ground fault um, outlet here. And then again, more copper kind of running throughout. And let's see. Uh, can you <laughs> kind of see the shower? Okay. So um, the shower is maybe my most favorite thing. It's exposed copper piping. Um, and so when people see it, they ask, is there a reason for this? And functionally, no, it's purely form. Um, I just made it in the design and, and uh, sweated the pipes. Um, and again, with the same thought that over time, the copper will patina and mature and you'll see kind of the, you'll, you, it, it'll visibly show time, which I think is kind of nice. And then there's a porcelain shower head, also an antique, um, low flow. And then you have a window separating the study from the shower. That's a fogged or a smoked window. Um, 
There's a lot of different wood in the shower. Uh, the also unique is that it's um, Garoppa wood slats for the shower floor. And I actually just turned on the water in here, which is why it's wet. I'll turn it on again to show you. Um, and the on-demand heater works pretty well. It's already warm. Um, there's a valve up here. I'll turn it off so you can hear me. There's a valve up here, so all you have to do is set it to what you like, hot, cold, and shut it off here, and then turn it back on, and then shut it off and use it from day to day. It'll remember the right temperature that you want. Um, so this is Garoppa uh, for the flooring. Underneath, uh, I poured a cement shower pan, which added a lot of weight. I didn't realize that I was going to do a wood floor over top. Um, if I hadn't known and that I wasn't going to do tiling, then probably a plastic membrane would suffice. But there's a um, plastic shower pan membrane underneath the cement um, to ensure that no water is going through the shower pan to the uh, subflooring. There's also shower membrane for the walls throughout the bathroom. Um, and then there are strips of uh, wood uh, lathe running vertically that the Western Red Cedar, which is the siding for the shower, is fastened to, allowing for pockets of air on the back side so the uh, wood can dry from the back to the front and not only the front to the back. So it won't warp, it won't mold, Everything in here has been coated with two uh, uh, coats of marine water sealant. Um, so you can see kind of the water beads. It doesn't um, soak into the wood. So you can see there. Um, Grappa, uh, Batu, and then the floor is Ipe. Um, all different Indi Indonesian hardwoods. The supplier that I got them from said it was sustainable sources, but I now have come to find out I don't think that there are really sustainable um, rainforest or, or Indonesian uh, hardwoods. So used a little bit now, um, might not use it in the future, but it will last. It will last a long time. Um, the Western Red Cedar uh, might need to be changed out in 10 or 15 years is what the... Uh, the people at the lumber yard told me, but with that coat of marine grade sealant, I think they should be fine. So that's the bathroom. And that's the house.